Hey, it's LEGO Technics Rule, and I have a great project to show you today. I recently got my grubby little hands on one of these. It's a blower motor from a furnace. And you can see here that it's quite a beast of a motor because it's one half horsepower. So this got me thinking, could I turn this into a LEGO motor? Well, to start out, I first needed to get the motor to work. So I took a two-prong power cord and stripped the ends of it. I then hook up the common white wire to the hot side of my power cord. Then I protect it with the wire nut, of course. Then I hook the red wire up to the neutral side of my power cord. The reason I chose the low speed is just to make it a little bit safer. I also put a wire nut on this connection, too. I also attach an appropriate capacitor to the motor's capacitor wires. Without this capacitor, the motor wouldn't work correctly. I then gave the exposed terminals a good wrapping in UL-listed electrical tape. I then put a wire nut on the remaining exposed wires so I don't get shocked if I accidentally bump into them. Now I need something LEGO compatible that can fit on the shaft of the motor. So I took my least favorite 40 tooth gear and drilled a half inch hole in it because half inch is the diameter of the shaft on the motor. So I needed to hold the gear down and drill it at the same time and here's how I did it. Yeah, that didn't work at all, so what I had to do is try it with a smaller gear, so I did just that, and it worked just fine. So after building a little Lego stand for it, I think it's ready to plug it in. Let's pray nothing explodes. No, JK, it works just fine. Look at it go, it actually works. You can see that when I pinch the shaft, it doesn't stop. Now let's have a little fun with it. First step, paper in the gears. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to stick my fingers in there. Now let's try to cut a cardboard tube with this propeller piece. It didn't really do much, but you can hear it doesn't even slow down the motor a bit. Now let's put a piece of paperboard through the gears and see what happens. After seeing this, I'm actually kind of scared of this thing. Now I'm going to explain a discrepancy you might have noticed earlier on. So when I showed the motor's nameplate earlier, you probably noticed that it runs on 208 to 230 volts. I don't have access to that voltage where I'm recording this, but it's not that big of a problem. With induction motors like this one, you can run them at 120 volt, which comes out of the wall, at the expense that it draws twice the current as it would at 240. The current rating on this motor is 5 amps, so it's going to draw 10 amps, and you can get about 15 amps out of your wall, so I'm not overloading it, which is safe. Anyway, like I said earlier, my next video or two is going to be me playing around with this thing, hooking it up to different things. If you want to stay tuned for that, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Thanks for watching.